Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a really cool system with radicals. So at this point, if you want to give this problem a try, go ahead and pause the video and then look at the solution. Okay, all right, so we do have the system, the square root of x plus 2 plus the square root of y plus 1 is equal to 1 minus t. And then we have a radical, another radical expression uh, being equal to 5 plus t squared plus 2t. Okay, so t is kind of like a parameter here. We're just going to be looking for uh, all possible real solutions. Okay, all righty. So let's get started. So we're going to be uh, we're going to be considering uh, some factoring here under the second radical here. Uh, we do have a really nice expression that if you go ahead and use grouping, you can factor out an x here and you can factor out a two here. So the expression under the radical can actually be written as x plus 2 times y plus 1, which is kind of nice because we also have the same expression upstairs, right? Okay, so basically what we're going to do here is we're going to use a very, very powerful method in math. And that method is called substitution, okay? It's super powerful. Let's go ahead and use that. But how do we use it? Well, since the square root of x plus 2 and the square root of y plus 1 repeat here, we can actually go ahead and designate some variables for them, such that the square root of x plus 2, let's set it equal to a, and we know that a needs to be greater than or equal to 0, and then the square root of y plus 1, let it equal to b, and then again, b needs to be non-negative, okay? All right. After doing these substitutions, of course, uh, we are going to get a really nice system. And of course, it's going to be much simpler. Let's go ahead and write that down. We're going to be getting a plus b being equal to 1 minus t. And then from the second expression, we're going to be getting, since this is the product of a and b, we're going to get it 2ab being equal to 5 plus t squared plus 2t. Okay, awesome. This equation is much, much simpler, right? Let's go ahead and divide the second equation, both sides by two, and that's gonna give us AB is equal to five plus T squared plus two T all over two. And we also know that A plus B is equal to one minus T. So if you consider this as a system, now we, we're looking for two numbers, A and B, obviously, because that they're gonna allow us to find uh, X and Y. We're looking for two numbers, A and B, uh, such that their product is given and their sum is given. And what does this tell you if you think about Francois Viette, right? That's what you're thinking about. Okay, so we can just set up a quadratic equation, right? Because we have the product of the roots and we have the sum of the roots. So let's say the equation whose roots are given can be written like this. I'm going to use a different variable to not to make it very confusing. Let's say uh, the both A and B are represented by Z, okay? Z represents both A and B here. So I'm going to set up a quadratic equation like this one. If you remember how we set up a quadratic whose sum of roots and product of roots are given, it's like this. So I'm going to go ahead and write it down here. It's going to look like this. Z squared minus Z1 plus Z2Z plus z1, z2, equal to 0. So this is the equation whose roots are z1 and z2, okay? But in this case, instead of z1 plus z2, I'm using a plus b, and instead of z1 times z2, I'm using a times b, okay? I hope that makes sense. Plus, the product is going to go here because a is 1, so I mean the coefficient of z squared, that's what I mean by a, not this a. Okay, so our equation is going to look like this. Okay. And the whole thing is equal to zero. Awesome. Yeah, this might look complicated because we have a Z, we have a T, so on and so forth. But what is really critical here is that we're looking for real solutions. So this equation needs to have real solutions. What's that supposed to mean? Well, in terms of discriminant, right? The discriminant, you can use a D. Some people use a capital D. I like using the Greek letter delta, right? And that's an uppercase delta, delta which is a triangle basically, right? So delta needs to be greater than or equal to zero. By the way, delta is the discriminant, which is given by b squared minus 4ac 
But again, don't confuse that A with this A because this is a different A, okay? Awesome. So let's go ahead and write the discriminant for this quadratic equation. What is the discriminant equal to? The discriminant is, like I said, B squared, so that's going to be 1 minus T squared minus 4 times 1. The coefficient of Z squared is 1, so I don't have to consider that. Times C. C is the constant term, and in this case, this is considered constant. 5 plus T squared plus 2T divided by 2. Okay? So that's my discriminant. Let's go ahead and simplify this a little bit more. So 2 goes into 4 here, as you can see here. So that's a 2. So the discriminant is going to be 1 minus 2t plus t squared. And then I'm going to go ahead and distribute the negative 2. So that's going to look like negative 10 minus 2t squared minus 4t. All right. Let's go ahead and simplify this expression a little bit more. The discriminant is going to equal from here negative t squared minus 6t minus 9. So that's kind of interesting. Why? Because we want the discriminant to be greater than or equal to zero. But take a careful look at this expression. It's actually, it contains a perfect square. I, I, I shouldn't be saying it's a perfect square, but it does contain one. And what is that supposed to mean? Well, if you take out a negative one here, you'll get t squared plus 60 plus 9, and you want it to be less uh, greater or equal to zero. Now notice that the expression inside the parentheses is actually t plus 3 quantity squared. And as you know, a square cannot be negative. So when you multiply that by a negative, right? I mean, how can that be greater than or equal to zero, right? Because this can't be positive anymore. The only way out of this is that this expression needs to equal zero, okay? That means t is equal to negative 3, okay? Now, what is so good about finding t? Well, now, since you know the value of t here, the only t value that works, you can just go ahead and plug it in here in this expression. Let's go ahead and do that here. And then we can just copy that equation. If t is equal to negative 3, as we found here, the only possible value for t, then we're going to be getting a really nice equation here. That's going to look like z squared minus 4z. And if you plug in negative 3 here, you're going to get 9 plus 5 is 14. 14 minus 6 is going to be 8. 8 divided by 2 is going to be 4. So you're going to get this equation, z squared minus 4z plus 4 is equal to 0. But that's nothing but z minus 2 quantity squared, a lot of perfect squares here, which means that z is equal to 2. So the only possible value for our z is z equals 2. Now, what is that supposed to mean? Z was representing A and B here, right? In this equation, that's what Z represents. That means that A and B are both equal to 2. So this implied Z equals 2, and this implies A equals 2 and B equals 2. Okay? The only real solutions come from here. But what is A and B? Well, A is equal to the square root of X plus 2, right? A is equal to the square root of X plus 2, and B is equal to the square root of y plus 1. And we know that both of them have to equal 2. From here, we get that x is equal to 0 and y is equal to... If you square both sides, obviously this one is kind of easy because the square... Wait a minute, that's not right. Okay, no, no, no. I have to square both sides. So let me go ahead and do that. If I do, then I get x plus 2 is equal to 4, from which I get x equals 2. And if you square both sides here, you get y plus 1 is equal to 4 and y is equal to 3. So our solution set is going to be 2 comma 3 in this case. And that's going to be the only real solution pair. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, and see you in the next video.